that that button should have made it work so this you should be seeing estuary sex november 4th 2021 that sex is bad but you should only have as much sex as you need to have as many children as you need right because sex draws you away from god and even then like in early christianity it was common for married couples once they got past the childbearing age to then suddenly have a celibate marriage For the story in the video conversation I posted recently in Bless Me Father for I Have Sinned. That's what I entitled the video. Yeah, it was obviously all, uh, you know, influenced by the, he especially early on, the heavy influence that Plato and kind of yeah. the Gnostics were having where like, you're Again, okay. these people are probably in some ways better educated than many, many clergy in church. Because sex draws you away from God. Because sex draws you away from God. Better educated than many, many clergy. and you know you, we need to reach the spiritual plane and so i think a lot of that was also like kind of this platonic influence which was growing at the time uh, uh, john ravicki hears him talking about plato that way i mean well, as far as i know the first like sex positive christian was martin luther mind fucks is my department these days i get none of the like everything it's all wilted and useless but lots of mind fucking going on no <laughs> thanks for asking in the still of the night. Okay, this is a clip from the, the, the feature film The Cucking of Paul Atreides where, where the man being tested to whether or not he's an animal can only make it through by the telepathic help of his mommy on the other side of the door which is a vast, a vast differentiation from what we were exposed to when I was growing up, which was the little boy coming of age into a man. But <clears throat> so anyway, um, I bring these guys up because these, in this, in this fictional sci-fi universe, you are completely oblivious to as the Christian folk. They have a shadow matriarchy known as the Bene Gesserit. And the Bene Gesserit are practicing eugenics to breed the Messiah. And this naughty lady made a boy when she was supposed to make a girl. And that's how they ended up with it. You'll see, you'll see. Uh, spoilers! Um, but this shadow matriarchy. Huh. Why do you have a girlfriend? Are you going to stop marvelizing with me now? No, 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 I'm, I'm just curious. Why do you have a girlfriend? I do things whatever I can't do with my wife. Why can't you do them with your wife? Hey, that's the mouth she kisses my kids goodnight with. What are you crazy? All right. Have you been? And they're encouraging the sneaky Federker strategy by it making men who are masculine like bad. And then when you embrace the image of the frog, you break the spell. And that's really offensive because you're really breaking their reality. So it makes them like go belligerent. Like that's the rage because you you break that um, glamour spell it, when you're when you embrace that. Yes, I am the frog. That's what kissing the frog is. Is like yes, you are the frog, and then that breaks the spell. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> and, and with the loss of the with, with the loss of the shadow matriarchy practicing practical eugenics like don't breathe with that one sweetheart uh, oh look at this one and it's called prostitution and the truth about prostitution is the reason it's illegal is because it's too obviously true this has been a true for short from Grim Grizz all right, I'm sorry. I'm, this is going to be hard to stomach for a lot of people, but he makes a point that I don't feel like taking the time to make myself. So, it's two minutes. Blues. Fighting the housewife blues. And you have uh, soap and a bottle. It's associating that with blues. They're trying to create a narrative that the housewives are blue. 
that they're sad, when in reality that's the most free, productive, and um, full of purpose and health a woman can possibly be is a stay-at-home wife and mother in a prosperous household. That's where that's an ideal place for a woman. We all know this now. So that was in 77. So what happened in 87? Who's bringing up baby? With both mom and dad at work, the big problem is finding quality health care. Where do you find that quality health care? And then 10 years later, early puberty. Why girls are growing up faster? Is it hormones? Is it fat? Is it something in the water? How parents and kids are developing? That's 2000. I'll tell you exactly how this happens. You, put, you send the mom to work. There's nobody home for the kids. They go through puberty faster. Girls go through puberty faster when they are in an unstable... Can we have an evolutionary biologist fact check that for us real quick? I mean, we're all in the estuary. We have all sorts of people around here. We should be able to have fact checkers, right? Environment. Girls go through puberty on average three years faster if there's a non-biological male in the house. Because what a girl thinks is she's about to be uh, kidnapped, raped. Family show here, buddy boy. Okay, but this to me comes back to this, this loss of the shadow matriarchy, which she talks about here as well as the identity. But this, this disgusting bit, you don't have to hear here. Let me put the window up so you don't have to look. was characterized largely by an entire generation of young who had been rejected by their mothers early and forced to leave the nest, and they were therefore unable to exhibit normal social behavior. This manifested in numerous ways. The females of this generation had far fewer children, and those that did have children lacked the maternal instincts necessary to raise them beyond weaning. Calhoun goes on to describe the males of this generation. Quote, So, he does. It's like, it's like the incels and the vol cells, but the like properly raising children became um, associated with the the it was the the oppression. The oppression was having to properly raise children into better human beings, and and now we have stage C. And so, unless there's a restoration of like hey, everybody, let's really get into home economics and start making, just like, I don't, everybody's so individualistic, I don't even think they're really paying attention to what their children are being individualized have to look into. for a position that's comfortable. What really matters is you have to find your secret sacred self. To the point where you could graduate from college, you could be in your early 20s, and you have no idea who you are, that voice is totally drowned out. And you end up going on a career path that seems right, you're gonna... So, that seemed really relevant to the discussion. It's, it's, we, we've lost the ability and respect for, like, the sacredness of human life. Like, we don't give a shit about your kids. We, we, we'd love to catch you abusing them because then we would be virtuous for catching you. But we don't, your actual children, no, the, and with the loss of the sanctity of each individual life in the pursuit of like saying that, I don't know, it's weird. Like how, how does that come about? How does, how does uh, the secret sacred self end up in the antinatalism? I guess because you can't be, you don't got time for that. Ain't nobody have time for that. Where's the, where's, the, is there no motherhood secret sick? There's no fatherhood secret sick? What? Uh, uh. Anyway, uh, there's me trying to have estuary sex with everybody. Special thank you for my shadow producers. <laughs> Seshad, Gideon, Gavin, and R. Thanks everybody. Have a good night. Good afternoon.